Years and years and years ago when I was a boy, when there were wolves in Wales, and birds the colour of red flannel petticoats whisked past the harp-shaped hills, and we sang and wallowed all night and day in caves that smelt like Sunday afternoons in damp front farmhouse parlours, and we chased with the jawbones of deacons, the English and the bears. Before the motor car, before the wheel, before the duchess-faced horse, when we rode the daft and happy hills bareback, it snowed and it snowed. But here a small boy says, It snowed last year too. I made a snowman and my brother knocked it down and I knocked my brother down and then we had tea. <laughs> well, that was not the same snow, I say. Our snow was not only shaken from whitewashed buckets down the sky, it came shawling out of the ground and swam and drifted out of the hands and arms and bodies of the trees. Snow grew overnight on the roofs of the houses like a pure and grandfather moss, minutely white ivy the walls and settled on the postman opening the gate like a dumb, numb thunderstorm of white, torn Christmas cards. They were just ordinary postmen, Fond of Christmas and dogs and walking and the snow. They knocked on the doors with blue knuckles and stood on the welcome mats in the little drifted porches, huffing and puffing, making ghosts with their breath and jogging from one foot to the other like small boys wanting to go out. The postman sometimes brought presents as well as cards. There were the useful presents. Blinding tam like patchwork tea cozies and bunny-suited busbies and balaclavas for victims of head-shrinking tribes. <laughs> From aunts who always wore wool next to the skin, there were moustached and rasping singlets that made you wonder how the aunts had any skin left at all. I once I remembered a little crocheted nose bag from an aunt now, alas, no longer whinnying with us. And pictureless books in which small boys, though warned by quotations not to, would skate on Farmer Giles' pond and did and drowned. And books that told me everything about the wasp, except why. <laughs> and the useless presents. Snakes and families and happy ladders and easy hobby games for little engineers, complete with instructions. Oh, easy for Leonardo. <laughs> Never a catapult. Once by a mistake which no one could explain, a little hatchet. And a celluloid duck which made when you pressed it a most unduck-like noise. A mewing moo that an ambitious cat might make who wished to be a cow. <laughs> and a painting book in which I could make the animals, the grass, the trees, the sky and the sea, any color I pleased. And still the dazzling sky blue sheep are grazing in the red field under the rainbow billed and pea green birds. Mistletoe hung from the gas brackets in the front parlors of all the houses along our street. There were walnuts, bottled beer, sherry and crackers by the dessert spoon and the high heap fires spat ready for the chestnuts and the mulling pokers. A few large men, uncles almost certainly, stood in their front rooms, trying out their new cigars, holding them judiciously at arm's length, returning them to their mouths, coughing, and then holding them out again as though waiting for the explosion. <laughs> A few small aunts, not wanted in the kitchen or anywhere else for that matter, sat on the very edges of their chairs, poised and brittle, afraid to break, like faded cups and saucers. For lunch, which we called dinner, we had turkey and blazing pudding. After dinner, the uncle sat around the fire, loosened all buttons, put their large, moist hands over their watch chains, groaned a little and slept. Mothers, aunts and sisters scuttled to and fro bearing tureens. Auntie Bessie, who had been frightened twice by a clockwork mouse, whimpered at the sideboard and had some elderberry wine. The dog was sick. 
Auntie Dozy had to have three aspirin, but Auntie Hannah, who liked port, stood in the snowbound backyard, singing like a big bosomed thrush. <laughs> I blew up balloons to see how big they would get. And when they burst, which they all did, the uncles jumped and rumbled. In the rich and heavy afternoon, with the uncles breathing like dolphins and the snow descending, I sat amid festoons and Chinese lanterns, nibbling dates and making a model man of war following instructions for little engineers and produced what could be mistaken for a sea-going tram car. <laughs> at tea, the recovered uncles were jolly, and the iced cake loomed at the center of the table like a marble grave. Auntie Hannah laced her tea with rum, because it was only once a year. Bring out the tall tales now that we told around the fire while the gaslight bubbled like a diver. Ghosts wooed like owls in the long nights when I dare not look over my shoulder. Animals lurked in the cubbyhole under the stairs where the gas meter ticked. And I remember we went carol singing once when there wasn't the shaving of a moon to light the flying streets. At the end of the road was a long drive leading to a large house, and we stumbled up the blackness of the drive, all of us afraid, each with a stone in hand, just in case, but all too brave to say a word. The wind in the trees made noises as of old and unpleasant and maybe web-footed men wheezing in caves. We reached the black bulk of the house, and one, two, three, we began to sing, our voices high and seemingly distant in the snow-felted darkness around a house that was occupied by nobody we knew. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen. And then a small, dry voice, like the voice of someone who hasn't spoken in a long time, joined our singing. A small, dry, eggshell voice from the other side of the door. A small, dry voice through the keyhole. And when we stopped running, we were outside our house. <laughs> the front room was lovely. Balloons floated under the hot water bottle, gulping gas. Everything was fine again and shone over the town. Perhaps it was ghosts. Jack said. Perhaps it was trolls, said Dan, who was always reading. Let's see if there's any jelly left, said Jim. And we did. Always on Christmas night, there was music. An uncle played the fiddle. A cousin sang Cherry Ripe. Another uncle sang Drake's Drum. It was very hot in the little house. Auntie Hannah, who had got onto the parsnip wine sang a song about bleeding hearts and death, and another in which she said her heart was like a bird's nest. Then everybody laughed, and then I went to bed. Looking out of my window into the moonlight and the unending smoke-colored snow, I could see the lights in the windows of the other houses on our hill, and hear the music rising from them up the slow, steadily falling night. I turned down the gas. I got into bed. I said some words to the close and holy darkness. And then I slept.